So today uh, we are sitting in Maria, and Maria is, is uh, a new hub in Helsinki for ambitious startups uh, like Merrill Health. And today I have the opportunity to discuss with Christian Randa, who is the co-founder and CEO of Meru Health. And uh, I'd like to start with just asking about um, where do you kind of feel uh, that you are you are these days, and and uh, a little bit about your story, how you how you end up here in Maria. Mm. Thanks, I know. <coughs> really appreciate it. Um, you know. Thanks for having me here. Um, and uh, yeah, so kind of thinking back, uh, I guess my story goes pretty way, way back. So my mom and dad both being entrepreneurs, um, part of their lives. And, uh, and that's kind of like how I initially kind of figured it out that, uh, that that could be like a good profession. And, uh, you know, it kind of made it acceptable. There was some kind of an example uh, in the family and it was exciting even because my you know, dad was like, as an example, at one point he was running a, um, a plastic production kind of manufacturing company. <clears throat> so that was kind of pretty cool in a way when I was a kiddo to visit his factory and all, all that stuff. So, so maybe like it all started from, from back there. And then, um, you know, then kind of like when I was a teenager, I unfortunately went through like a lot of difficulties with the family. So my, um, you know, my mom was very sick for, uh, with, you know, with cancer for several times. And then, um, uh, in my early 20s and mid 20s, I also like unfortunately lost my eldest brother to, you know, he committed suicide after like uh, being depressed for for a long, long time. So um, these kind of these kinds of things that happened to me kind of gave me the other reflection on on like like you know the darker sides of life or whatever you want to call them. But but in a way that was like also now reflecting. I'm now 36, so like reflecting back that these things were actually like some of the most valuable things in my life because they kind of gave me the perspective and the understanding of like what it is to suffer and you know what other people go through and that kind of helped me to experience that and understand and then kind of you know expand my uh, understanding of of like how how I can cope myself you know with these situations and as they arise so there's always difficulties in life some people go through a lot some people go through less but but still, you know, everyone goes through some, and, and then the only thing that you can kind of do, you can't change the world, in a, in a way. You can't change change the situations as they come, but you can you can then learn to change how you take them. So you can learn to change your reaction and your perception. So uh, you know, quite early on, I got like uh, fortunately and unfortunately uh, <laughs> good lessons in like how to. Uh, you know, when you get hit in the face or whatever, then, you know, how do you kind of uh, get, get back up and, you know, uh, learn and go forward. So I guess that, you know, having these sort of like, uh, you know, long story short, but having these influences uh, helped me to, to uh, develop the skill sets and the, the mindset that, that was very instrumental to my uh, entrepreneurial activities later on. And... Uh, yeah, so, and then, you know, I also kind of, I uh, started playing the piano when I was six. My big brother and my, my big sister, they both played. And then I eventually ended up playing guitar and, you know, became a recording artist in my late, late teens and early 20s. And then these experiences as well, they gave me a lot of very important learnings in a way. Uh, you know, I performed to like, you know, thousands to tens of thousands of people at different festivals and stuff like that around the world. So. Uh, that was kind of like a very different career, but it, it taught me a lot about uh, about public performing, speaking, uh, about expressing yourself, and about kind of like um, learning many things through music, like which are so like more subtle uh, to perceive phenomena that are sometimes not as, not as, as, as obvious in a way, um, and uh, these kinds of things. So, so like sensitivity, I guess. And so, you know, this, this is kind of like, I guess, who I am, uh, <laughs> cutting it short. And then, um, yeah, um, do you want me to go to like kind of like the, the first company and how that all yeah, started? Let's, let's do, do a, take a question on that. So, yeah, uh, you have had such a, you know, amazing, uh, amazing and rich, rich life in a way. And, uh, and uh, um, I mean, I can't help but just admire 
your uh, strength and uh, any kind of your initiative in taking and in your ventures. So could you, could you first tell me a little bit about um, Mendor? Uh, so kind of the origins, where did it start and how you got involved and what was your role and how you experienced that, um, that whole uh, story with, with the company? Yeah, yeah, happy to. So um, it all started from like um, through the music circles when I had you know, played with my band and stuff like that. I learned to know a few folks and then one of my bandmates uh, you know, invited me to kind of brainstorm a business idea with, with him and his brother and some other guys and then you know we ended up founding a company uh, when I was 25 and that was Mender so that was the first company and, and the initial idea came from one of the guys uh, he was you know he's a diabetic and he was an industrial designer so he had an idea how to kind of develop a new kind of a glucose monitor for for type 1 diabetes uh, patients or people with type 1 diabetes and then we kind of started working on on that idea and eventually founded the company and then started building a medical device um, like from scratch, <laughs> which, you know, now reflecting back, <clears throat> it was, you know, kind of a crazy thing. And now I better understand why many people told us that, hey guys, you j should just like get a job. <laughs> don't, don't go there. Don't start building a medical device with no experience, no, you know, uh, no expertise. But then, you know, we kind of didn't, we ignored them and then, you know, we just went on. And uh, so that's kind of like how Mender was, was founded. And, and that's kind of like also how I kind of, deeply got into uh, the medical world and, and learned to understand and grow into medical devices and healthcare in general and how the whole healthcare works in our society. And um, with Mender, um, the, the important points were kind of like that since we were so inex inexperienced, uh, we did like so many mistakes. So it was a huge learning curve. But we also had a lot of ambition and a lot of like energy and we were able to achieve quite a lot of pretty cool stuff. So we ended up building the company to eventually like 65 people, uh, 4 million plus revenues. Uh, we raised like $25 million capital altogether. Um, but everything didn't, didn't go all that well. So we also like had a lot of challenges with the founders. We had a lot of challenges with the staff. We did like so many bad hires. And you know, I ended up kind of uh, starting as the VP business development, so I, my role was like you know sales, fundraising, that kind of stuff. And one of the other founders, he was the CEO in the beginning. Then we hired a couple of like uh, sort of like professional CEOs to to work with the company um, and take it forward, but you know didn't work out at all. So unfortunately, they, they just couldn't perform in that environment. And we hired like corporate guns, and and they just like they had no idea how to run a startup and and we didn't like have any idea that that would not work so you know very often like a startup is su such a different animal to a corporate uh, division or or uh, or even a huge business that you know people who've been trained in that are not necessarily uh, capable of coming in and just starting to lead a startup and growing a startup so you know we ended up then eventually being uh, at the brink of bankruptcy um, just before the product was kind of coming out, the, the glucose meter, which was the first product of Mender. And then I remember one board meeting where I was in the board of directors also as, a, as one of the founders at that point. And then one of the board members, he was an external guy, uh, non-executive director. And he, he asked me that, hey, you know, we're kind of facing a bankruptcy in, you know, in two weeks. <clears throat> you know, we got to do something, but you know, the CEO we hired, he, he can't, you know, he has, hasn't been able to perform. Uh, and raise any more money and stuff like that. So, unfortunately, you know, we were we had decided that you know we have, have to let him go. And then we were thinking about that. Well, you know, who should we then kind of try to you know bring on board as a CEO? This, you know, this, the ship is kind of like half sunken already. And then you know who's gonna come in? No one's gonna want to come in in this situation. So, then he asked me that, hey, you know, would you want to be the CEO? <laughs> Uh, well, I was kind of like, I guess I was, I was 28 or 29 or something like that. And then I was like, well, you know, what the hell, you know? I, I always wa had wanted to be a CEO and kind of like uh, try my wings, test my wings. And uh, then immediately I just like said that, of course. And, you know, even though I knew that there's only like two weeks runway and we were like almost certainly going bankrupt. <laughs> um, but then, then, you know, sometimes things change. And then... Uh, 
I that was maybe the most difficult two weeks. I mean, like from a stress stress perspective, I was like super stressed, and I I wasn't like mm, you know maybe in many ways I hadn't developed like many good practices and and like skills to cope with the stress back then, which I n now have. So I couldn't like really manage the stress too well, and I was just like overwhelmed, with them. and I couldn't sleep, and I was like totally sick almost <laughs> two weeks. But uh, but you know one one thing which was good was that I um, our office at that point was next to a forest, so like a big park. And every day I went after lunch, I went for a for a long walk in the forest because I was just so tired already after lunch. Uh, having worked the whole morning trying to do fundraising like and you know I, I we had two weeks and and then I, I knew that you know if I can't succeed in raising like hundreds of thousands of, of new financing we're gonna have to call it quits and uh, but then somehow things started opening up and I eventually we ended up closing like half a million new financing in two weeks and then eventually you know a bit further uh, one of the existing investors came in and they invested like another half a mil. So then actually in like few weeks we had like one million in new financing, uh, which was pretty, pretty weird. <laughs> like it just happened, but you know, uh, it wasn't easy, so. Yeah. So what was, what was it? I mean, how, how did you achieve it? Achieve it? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure that I even know, but uh, I was just like, I was so determined and I had such a strong will to succeed and, and you know, I, I, I knew that, that, you know, this is like a huge opportunity we had and I, I, I loved the company, you know, we had kind of already been working on developing the product like many years to get to that point and we had had so many challenges already there, but I was super determined and then I, I knew that it's, you know, that there's, you know, I had, I had already by then I, like experienced quite many difficulties in, in my life and like my mom being very sick and, and, uh, and stuff like that. So then I had kind of learned that, uh, that even though sometimes things seem totally desperate, you know, sometimes things just turn around. So you never know. And if you don't try, you know, then you, you'll never know. And then I, I was like already too vested into the company and, and you know, into the team and everything uh, that I felt that, you know, what the hell, if I totally fail, then so be it. So maybe, the, you know, not being too, f too afraid of the failure gave me the strength to somehow get things, things moving. And, and the ambition that I had, uh, the determination, that was something that kind of then convinced the main investor who actually came on board. And, and later on, he actually told me when someone else, I remember it was like one other meeting where he was there and I was there, someone else asked him like, why did you invest in the company? And he said that, well, because of that guy. <laughs> so I guess it was just the determination. So. Yeah, that's amazing. So what year was that? That was uh, in... Uh, 2010, I think. And so you, were, you continued as the CEO of Mendor for a few years then? Yeah, so then, then I, I, yeah, I became the CEO and then we raised the funding and then we took the product to market, started growing the company, uh, hired a lot of people. Then we ended, ended up raising like altogether like 8 million euros in the next like six months or so. And that gave us like good fuel to, to fuel the growth and to expand to different markets in, in Europe and stuff like that. But, but then um, unfortunately uh, that was a hardware business, medical device business, so it was super capital intensive. And, and we couldn't still raise enough capital to really make the production and everything work in a cost-effective manner. And then we had another big challenge that uh, was that I was super inexperienced. So I didn't really know how to build like a medical device startup that was growing like uh, through the roof at that point. And then, you know, I, I made bad hires and, and they ended up costing us a lot. So I, I wasn't able to build the team, you know, and, and you know, there's also the point that Finland is kind of a, you know, there wasn't like a, uh, many people here, if, if any, who had done anything like that before. So it was super difficult to recruit anyone, like people from glucose monitoring, from diabetes, 
no one had ever done anything like that in Finland. So it was just like there was no one to hire here. So we needed to hire all the all the people who had like that level of expertise from from UK and other countries. And that wasn't too easy either because they were all like basically corporate guns or like older older folks. And then I had to quickly learn to manage like uh, you know I was like my like 29, 30, early 30s, and then I had to manage people who were like 50, 50 plus, and then like you know so it, there's like a lot of challenges there, but. But it was a huge experience, and I, you know, super thankful for all the years and all all the learnings. Um, so then we ended up growing the company, and we started also developing another business, a data analytic business, to actually analyze all the data from the glucose monitors that were out there now, uh, you know, uh, with patients. And uh, then eventually the, the hardware business, uh, after five years, uh, we ended up selling it. Um, that business to a Korean public company because we had like huge difficulties in actually making it profitable uh, and then we had difficulties in like being able to raise adequate capital to make it profitable so then we ended up selling it to a, a Korean public company that was our partner uh, already like a manufacturing partner so they they took it over and uh, you know it wasn't a good exit but it was still an exit and we luckily got it out of our hands in, in a you know fairly uh, fairly kind of good manner uh, and then you know we had by then we had already built uh, a data analytic business like uh, so like diabetes management business where clinics and patients were connected through mobile and, and internet based applications to help manage patient populations and analyze glucose monitoring data to improve uh, care so that had actually uh, by the time we sold the business to the Korean company in um, in the spring 2015, <clears throat> we had already grown that business to be like a 300,000 euro annual business. So it was like a budding, budding business with like, we had a couple of good partnerships like with, uh, you know, uh, pharmaceutical companies and stuff like that. And then I was pretty excited about that. But unfortunately at that time, uh, we had also like gone through like many, many rounds of fundraising and you know hadn't been able to really raise that like you know big chunk of like 10 20 million additional financing so we had been totally diluted with the founders and with the early investors and the cap table and the whole structure had become quite a quite a challenging uh challenging mess uh to be honest and then it, it was difficult to kind of you know we had the new business there after selling the old business but you know sort of like the, uh, the you know the settings for that uh, or the basis for building the new business weren't like optimal anymore with like having a lot of institutional investors there and now at a very early stage startup again because we you know the new business was at very early stage so we ended up then uh, you know uh, I started thinking about it with the board that we need to restructure the company like totally like the cap table and you know everything and uh, then I started working with a couple of new investors um, with whom I had worked before whom I trusted to kind of work through like a management buyout kind of a scenario and a restructuring of the company but that didn't work out so I, I couldn't kind of push it through as me and the management team would have wanted so the, the existing shareholders they didn't see the vision you know we had they didn't they weren't willing to kind of you know believe us at that point with our vision and they had another way of thinking and that that's totally okay but then you know I uh, in like September 15 uh, yeah then I, uh, I decided that it's, you know, it's not my battle anymore, that I, I couldn't anymore do what I came there to do. You know, what I felt personally was like my contribution. And, uh, uh, you know. So where did you get the idea for the new business? Yeah, so that's kind of a, that's a good question. So um, it came from maybe like three different sources in a way. One thing was that, uh, uh, over the years, I had, you know, learned quite a lot about building medical businesses. So having kind of built two businesses, like medical device and digital health, and then that was like like a lot of experiences, understanding the markets and the dynamics, and learning, you know, built networks around the world and stuff like that. So that was like one asset, and I I was super excited about the development of digital health and what was happening to the healthcare system. There was like an active disruption starting to happen, and, and like so much potential, and so much potential to also like it, like drastically improve, improve healthcare and healthcare delivery uh, around the world um, that was super exciting and then uh, the other thing was that I you know my kind of earlier on my brother's suicide was still something that kind of 
uh, was like a, an immense uh, experience to me, immense sadness, immense suffering and struggle, but also then eventually turned out to be like a great reflection of, of like, like what's actually important in life and like what should be cherished right now uh, in, in every moment. And then uh, that was like a huge thing, huge in a way asset to me, for me in a way that I felt that I, I really want to kind of one way or another kind of give back to him and other people like him. Because there were so many people who were who were suffering like him, and you know who who could be helped with you know new kinds of treatment uh, methods and, and tools. So that was the second thing, and then the third thing was that I uh, I had actually developed a, a meditation practice of my own. So I was kind of uh, you know my mom used to do some yoga back back in the days, and and she kind of you know planted the idea in my head that there's like something super interesting with like all the Easter stuff like meditation, yoga and stuff like that. And then uh, I started uh, practicing some meditation already like even before I became CEO of Mender. Um, but then when I was the CEO of Mender and gone, you know, went through all these the forest episodes and all these difficult times, uh, I, had, I had started to kind of apply meditation into my so like daily routines. And maybe when I was 30, I started like doing daily meditation or mindfulness, as some people call it. And that was tremendous asset in, in like self-realization and stress management and like personal growth. So that, that I, you know, I, I get excited when I, when I think about it because that was such a gift uh, that I learned it and, I, and, th and that I started like applying it in my everyday, everyday life. And, and I felt and I had experienced it myself that it was transformative. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been doing like physical exercise, uh, like jogging and, and running and swimming and stuff like that and biking. And I, I still do and I love that. But, but this was something like, you know, something, you know, additional in a way or something like, you know, uh, adding a lot of value to me personally. And then I, I also, it made me realize that how much this could help other people even though I wasn't suffering from like, you know, serious mental illness, um, but I had like a lot of stress. Uh, and then it helped me so much. And all my sleeping problems went away. And I was like, I was just like baffled, like, wow. Like, you know, in a way so easily. Of course, it takes time to learn the practice and all that, but still it's kind of fairly easily. And, you know, I, I sleep like a baby nowadays, even though I'm, you know, still experiencing a lot of stress at times, but it's just, everything's just changed in a way. There's like another perspective. And, and these, you know, this was such a big uh, kind of uh, realization for me that I, I felt that this is something that I want to give to others. And uh, yeah, well, these three components combined kind of... Uh, when was this? When was this, when was this combination that it all came together? Yeah, that was like um, 2015 um, when I had left uh, Mender. Uh, I quit the company then as CEO and then uh, one of my colleagues, uh, we had kind of started brainstorming already a bit earlier that w could we kind of uh, do something together because we you know, really liked working it, uh, with each other. And then we ended up like then co-founding or founding together and then we brought in one of our university buddies uh, as the third co-founder and we all shared the same values so we all wanted to do something with our talents and our kind of skills to really help uh, improve the healthcare system uh, and help to bring new technologies and new remedies to people uh, around the world and kind of like do something that with a meaning like something like you know uh, that we had been given so much how could we give it back? And uh, yeah, that's that's how when we started the company uh, in 2015 in December, and then um, we ended up first going through like cor the corporate sector. We wanted to create like a wellness program because we felt that healthcare wasn't yet ready for our ideas of like uh, you know like you know meditation as medicine or meditation as precision medicine, you know through digital means. So we kind of that was sort of like pretty pretty novel. So we felt that you know that might be we might be too early, which is very often the case with many startups. They're like way too early, and then they fail because of that. So we we were a bit afraid at that point, and we started uh, checking out companies and and sort of like the HR 
human resources and the wellness budgets and the wellness side of things that could we help people who were super stressed because there's like a lot of people who suffer from chronic stress and, and it's a huge problem and it's a gateway to like so many uh, healthcare problems like you know most of the western healthcare problems are in one way or another they start from stress so uh, we went then first to the uh, kind of a created like a digital program to help people manage stress and to help them get empowered so the core thing already from the very beginning was that we wanted to help people get empowered and what that meant for us was also what we had experienced that when people get empowered when they realize that they themselves inside hold the power to their own change and development and even healing their own you know ailments or you know even disease then that was something that we felt is at the, at the core of what we wanted to give to others and then we were just started to find or you know started finding the way the method the channel you know where we could realize that and then uh, yeah that's how how it started so you started with the cor corporate wellness programs and you, you there were uh, for a few weeks um, it lasted for a few weeks and you were selling them um, to 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 the HR through the HR right yeah yeah so that's that's how we started so uh, we went to we did a lot of customer development so you know Steve Blank and his teachings have, have you know become quite familiar to us so we, we kind of did a lot of customer development as Steve taught uh, and then uh, then we kind of uh, we learned that there is definitely a market and there's definitely interest there's definitely something there so then we created an MVP like a minimum viable product and and went on and, and got the first corporate customers and delivered wellness programs to their staff of like you know very stressed people at companies but then quite quickly we actually learned that that stress in a way, even though it's such a huge problem, on the other hand, many people actually in the Western world especially, and you know, in the East as well, I guess, were actually proud of stress. So, and then we kind of realized that, well, yeah, it's kind of something that we also knew, that, you know, it's, it's in our culture, that stress is kind of like a bad thing, but it's also something people admire, that, you know, you need to be like a great executive or a great consultant or whatever. And part of that is like, you know, just like being super stressed and other people admire that. And, you know, so it was kind of like a like a weird setting in a way. But we, you know, even though everyone kind of knows this, we didn't really realize it from from that perspective before we went out to uh, to, to sell to the companies and and delivering our programs. So we were able to actually like, you know, get some really good results and we were able to like get really good feedback from the companies and had some good customers. Uh, but then we felt like kind of empty with the guys and we felt that this wasn't really what we what we wanted to do. We wanted to really help people to reduce suffering and we wanted to help people get empowered. But in that setting, it was like 50-50, you know. Some people were like really suffering and they needed help. But then like a lot of people were just like, well, this is just like some kind of a fad, you know, or, or something like which is just for fun, you know. Like, hey, you know, meditation is cool or, or like, you know, these behavioral uh, interventions and like me changing my behavior, becoming more resilient or whatever, they're kind of like cool things, but not like something which is totally necessary. So there wasn't like that much of a pressing need. Exactly. In a way, exactly. In that and scenario. Yes. In that so setting. totally. And then we felt that that's not like what we came here to do. You know, you know, that's not, that's not what we're here for. So uh, we wanted to like solve a problem and like really help people reduce suffering and empower people. And then we d decided that, uh, that, you know, and, and the other thing was also uh, that we realized that the, the wellness market wasn't like really actually investing in preventative m measures. So still uh, a lot of the people who were, you know, sitting on the budgets, they were sort of like thinking that this is cool, but it's just something like extra versus like healthcare being something where you're like really helping people who have like serious needs. So then we went back to the drawing board and in when was this? that was like uh, we decided to pivot in May 2016, and then then we were all all lost out in out in the sea, and and we were like, well, you know, we we sort of like uh, quit that business and and like uh, settled the accounts with some of the some of the customers we had, and then like stopped everything. And then in the summer we started thinking about that. Hey, 
in June, July, that what, what should we do, do then? Like, what's next? And then, you know, we were really confused for a while. Like, what should we do? Like, we had so many ideas. But then we kind of, we couldn't, like, get a hold of anything. It was, like, struggling. And then we became, like, really stressed. So that was, like, actually one of the most, again, like, one of the most intensive, sort of, like, periods in my life from a work perspective where I was like totally lost and it actually like I felt even like maybe not depressed but like uh, kind of like you know I had like quite a low mood I felt that I can't really like realize my uh, I couldn't like sort of like push out the energy and, and it's like my purpose I was like totally lost it was like all over the place and and that that like kind of made me uh, you know feel a bit down I guess which is totally not typical to me so I, I felt like out of myself in a way uh, yeah I'm usually pretty pretty kind of upbeat and jolly so so that was kind of uh, a challenging period but then I went to uh, a meditation retreat which had been uh, you know a dream of mine for a long time so I went to a Vipassana retreat in Sweden uh, which was sort of like 10 days of intense meditation and and there on day six everything became crystal clear so then like i totally like uh you know some some or you know some people might call it a vision or whatever but i like on on day six having kind of done some like 60 hours of meditation by then there's like 10 hours a day and you know it's a it's a, it's a crazy and a cool thing at the same time uh so um then i just like it just like emerged then i realized that 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 the idea that kind of the initial idea that we had sort of like had before we went to the corporate sector because you know I mentioned that we, we we were a bit afraid of of that the healthcare world would not be ready for our ideas at that point and we started with the corporate sector with the wellness sector then it became crystal clear to me that we have to go back and actually then just like do some more customer development and then you know move forward towards like making this a medical intervention and then, um, yeah, then I was like, I was like, it was like eye-opening, you know. Uh, but also the cool thing was that, I, again, I had had this low mood, which was not kind of typical to me at all. But during those days of like sitting there and like meditating and, and uh, I was totally like back to normal in just like a few days. So, uh, so with the new, new product, uh, so you approached the, the uh, healthcare sector, and so what was what was their reaction, or how did they uh, how did they react, or in you know what was their their reaction to, to the new new idea? Yeah, well, you know, it was a kind of a funny thing that when we then actually after like all the kind of the pivots and everything and all the uncertainty, once we then started doing customer development with the oh, actually the original idea, it like totally hit hit the goal. So then we, we were like, like so surprised in a way, but kind of like we weren't, <laughs> but it was so, uh, you know, good time started in a way, because then when we went on to talk to psychiatrists, doctors, and you know, we wanted, we had formulated like an idea that, that this can help people with mental health problems, you know, and, and, and even more specifically, we could develop this into a digital intervention for depression which is a huge health problem nowadays, unfortunately, very also you know, costly to, to our societies. So then um, we had formulated the idea and, and we went on to test that idea with a lot of doctors, healthcare professionals, you know, healthcare organization leaders, uh, payers, insurance companies, blah, 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 you know, like a lot of stakeholders. And it just like totally resonated. And then we were super excited because we felt that, wow, and actually we weren't too early at all you know it seemed to be like something that at least psychologists and psychiatrists they were more than open to so like taking in so what was the reaction from the healthcare sector so who did, who did you go to at first yeah so um, <clears throat> we went to uh, you know a lot of different healthcare stakeholders we went to meeting a lot of doctors psychiatrists mental health professionals like you know payers healthcare organizations stuff like that but the key, the key thing was that when we met <coughs> a head psychiatrist uh, of a big student health system in Finland, uh, he was responsible of the budget for mental health care and for you know, treatment of depression and anxiety and stuff like that. 
And he was the one that kind of eventually totally validated the idea for us. And, you know, many had also, many others had also validated it for us, but, but he was the one who was willing to put, put the budget behind it in a way. So he said that, you know, there's a tremendous need in his population, like tens of thousands of people, uh, students, uh, uh, you know, who are being served by that health system to kind of give them something else than just like medication for treating depression. So, you know, the students had uh, in those populations become more and more reluctant to just take medication because of, because of the, you know, the various problems that, that unfortunately uh, exist. You know, medication definitely helps some people, but there's also a lot of people that, you know, who don't benefit at all. So <clears throat> he kind of validated and he was willing to start collaborating with us to kind of, you know, develop it further and, and do research. So then, then we, you know, we were super excited. Uh, okay, you know, now uh, that was like close to like the end of the year, uh, end, end of the year 16, 2016. And then we were already internally like confident that this is really the, the way to go. And we had started building a new product. So like modifying the product to meet the needs or, you know, specifically for uh, become a medical intervention. We had hired a psychologist and, you know, we were, you know, we were working with a couple of doctors and stuff like that. Uh, and started like building the team and advisors. And then, <clears throat> you know, kind of uh, jumping ahead a bit, um, in, in early spring uh, 17, uh, we had the MVP again ready and we had started treating the first patients. And throughout the spring 2017, we ended up like then uh, with professional therapists uh, and with our program, with our digital tools, treating like something like 50 plus patients. And the, the results were phenomenal. So we got super good results and we got like so good feedback from people. Like many people were like, you know, giving us testimonials that they were feeling that this was like transformative, that they had like so much benefited from, from the intervention, from the product. And uh, then, then we were like, uh, you know, we felt that, wow, you know, we're definitely onto something here. And that was, uh, you know, in many ways, like, of course, we were happy as founders, you know, we had been so lost, like nine months before. And then we were, you know, now in another uh, situation. But then even more importantly, uh, that the market was ready. The patients were, patients were really benefiting, we could help a lot of people with real big needs, uh, who were suffering. And then, you know, the clinical results were, uh, were really good. Uh, considering with, that we were still at very early stage. So, yeah, so that's kind of like, you know, where it all sort of like, you know, where it came to. And then... Um, so since you're operating in the healthcare system, so you probably the next thing you need is, is a lot of research to, to back up your product, isn't that... Yeah, so... ...the things you need to now? focus on yeah that's an important point so always when you're you know when you're developing like a new medical intervention um, then you, you need to do like you know research you need to prove it you know you need to publish stuff like that uh, but then actually here because we uh, we kind of like started uh, from a from a perspective that we became an online clinic with licensed professionals treating patients digitally using the tools we had developed that were already actually evidence-based tools. So we had taken evidence-based psychological therapy components and elements with medical professionals, building all this into a product that sort of like augmented the resources of the therapists who were licensed professionals. So we actually could, could get started already with an evidence-based solution right off the start to treat patients. And without like needing to, you know, do all the validation up front before we could even test with anyone. So we kind of turned it around like that. And then uh, that's why we, you know, we're now operational. So now we actually have first paying customers and you know, we, we continue treating patients in Finland and actually now also working in the US with the first, first customer. But definitely even in addition to you know, what we've now, where we've come to now and what we've built, um, we are still uh, doing research. So we're actually like preparing uh, two different uh, research collaborations at, at, at the time. So one is with the student health system that I mentioned and, and the other one is with a prestigious US university and that will kind of uh, publish a bit later. 
Um, but definitely, so in addition to doing what we do, treating patients, monitoring our effectiveness as, a, as an online clinic, collecting anonymous user data to see how well we perform, how effective the treatment is, we'll also be doing like peer-reviewed external, externally validated scientific research. That's a, yeah, that's a very impressive. Uh, you achieved so much in a very short time. I mean, thinking about it, uh, the pivot was uh, about last year, mm. uh, about one year and you know mm. some months ago. So that's really, really impressive. So uh, congratulations, this is amazing. Thanks. Um, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about your leadership philosophy, if we if you could call it that. So <laughs> since you are still, I mean, you are the co-founder, but you are the CEO of Metal Health. So, uh, so what do you think about leadership these days? Well, that's one of my favorite topics. Uh, yeah, so I guess that, you know, uh, um, I think the essence of leadership is like knowing oneself. So personally, I believe that the better I know myself, the better I can lead others. And uh, like, therefore, developing your own self-knowledge and self-awareness. That's my leadership philosophy in a way, you know. To, uh, to kind of cut it very short uh, and to get started with. Um, so, you know, I've kind of like through my meditation practice and through like reading like ton of books and, you know, I'm, I'm being mentored by, you know, I've been lucky being mentored by like really great, great people over the past 10 years and having had the chance to work with so many great people and having also had the chance to, and being lucky enough to have like great people in my family and in my, you know, sort of like friends, friendship uh, circles who've taught me so much. So. I think that that's kind of like important uh, in leadership is to understand and know yourself so you're able to understand others. And then if you're able to understand and relate with others, then you can also, you know, kind of lead others. And you can kind of then, you know, show the way and, and maybe like help other people to realize their potential. So then, you know, kind of going into like other kind of details, I feel that one of the most important things that I believe in, in in leadership is that I want to help other people thrive you know my I believe in servant leadership so I'm like kind of like the janitor uh, or the person who who's responsible of helping other people grow and who's who's responsible in the organizational setting to managing you know making sure that we have resources so that other people can do what they're best at and my my job is to build the team and make sure that we have the best people in doing what we need to get done and you know having a lot of fun at the same time so so kind of like i need to sort of like get out of the way <laughs> almost like and 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 make sure that that the other people are are you know happy uh and and resourced to do what what they came here to do um, but i also am responsible for communicating the vision and communicating the you know the meaning meaning of like why are we doing what we're doing and like really like communi communicating that well because you know it's that's what resonates that's what's the beacon that kind of calls the people you know around us to to join who feel the resonance in them that wow you know that's 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 what's kind of what i believe in also like wow you know and then they are drawn to us and then that's kind of like how uh, how it happens so it's kind of like a you know, I guess I'm kind of like a, you know, like a, like a, like a beacon or something. Uh, but then I'm also the one who keeps the floors clean so that everyone else can do what they need to do. So since you have also been uh, a member of a, a metal band, <laughs> Norther, uh, so you're the lead guitarist, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, could you draw some parallels? <laughs> from that experience to, to, to your current, current job, if, if you will? Yeah, well, there's actually quite a lot. So, uh, you know, uh, the world is very often very structured and structures are appearing in many areas. So, um, yeah, so I guess that, the, you know, building a band and, you know, kind of having a, a record label and a management agency and like, you know, different partners and, and resources and everything, you know, working with us touring and you know recording albums and stuff like that it's like a company you know the band is like a startup 
you know, it needs resources, resources, and, and it, you know, it has stakeholders. You know, it's kind of creating something that's supposed to add value for other people. And then you know, there's a you know, there's bunch of ambitious people who believe in what they're doing, and so it's like in many ways like a startup. So I kind of like actually my in a way my first startup was was the band. And actually we had a company with the band and we we had our budgets and we had our financing and you know income and and costs and expenses. So there's like so many similarities actually. And you have inspired a lot of people, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I hope so. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. So that's that's you know I'm very happy happy about that. So I guess that you know building a company is just another way, another version of adding value to the world. Like, you know, creating music or making music and, and you know, writing lyrics and, and, you know, maybe touching people through those means is kind of a way of influencing and helping other people to find themselves. In, you know, even sometimes in small pieces or, but sometimes they are, they can be even like big revelations for some people. But, you know, kind of doing something with a company, like what we're doing with Maru, uh, is actually very similar on a structural level, that we are, you know, kind of catalyzing something uh, to be usable for many people, uh, for them to benefit from. So if somebody is uh, feeling low and, and uh, feeling a bit of uh, depressed even, so what would you like to say to that person? Well, you know, uh, Having been there myself, then uh, I would say that that there's always hope, and 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 that there's there's always hope in even the darkest situations, and and the point is that um, you know, kind of asking for help, finding finding different tools uh, that can be helpful, you know, is definitely the starting point. So. You know, people should should just go and ask for help, and and you know should not be afraid of talking about and like being ashamed of of any any kinds of difficulties that they face because every one of us faces these difficulties. You know, like everyone has has people in their family, uh, if not themselves, you know, who've experienced depression or or other health problems like physical health problems or mental health problems. So, you know, <clears throat> it's not something to be afraid of or to be ashamed of, um, but rather like kind of, I, you know, talking about it and, and seeking for help, you know, the one who seeks, the one, the one will receive, so uh, then, you know, you can get back on tracks and, and uh, uh, or back on track on kind of uh, starting to heal again, so I'm getting better. Thank you so much. Great Thank time. you. It's Thank such you. A pleasure.